Church here, and welcome to the Game Grinder. And today I'm doing a tagged video response to the Ultra Extreme Bombastic Game Room. Uh, I was tagged to talk about a dream game that I would like to see made, or dream games I would like to see made. Uh, so I've kind of been thinking about this one pretty good uh, since I was tagged. Um, actually, I, I missed his video and it wasn't for a few days until I found out that he had tagged me. So I've kind of been thinking about it and it's, it's kind of a tough one because uh, in many ways uh, there are a lot of games that I anticipate, but I, I'd like to see what game creators make. Like, um, of course there are things I, I would like love, you know, that aren't in existence. But uh, anyways, so I just kind of thinking about this and I actually had some interesting thoughts on it. So really as is, there isn't something I could really think of that doesn't exist to, to some extent or another. Um, so actually I'm gonna talk about uh, kind of th three games here and this actually relates directly to my uh, last tagged video response, my top five nostalgic games, but uh, I'll get to that more in a minute. So, so basically the games that I would love to be made uh, are of franchises that I, what my favorite game franchises, some of my favorite games ever. Um, I would like to see new iterations that really you know, kind of push the boundaries, I guess, as it were, to what they can do. So, really, the first game that came to mind when I was thinking about this was, what was my dream game? And, um, Left 4 Dead 3 uh, is something that I, I dream of, in all honesty. And what I would really like to see happen, um, compared to Left 4 Dead 1 and Left 4 Dead 2, is, you know, relatively the same thing. You know, still the, the first person, um... Uh, co-op experience with the versus mode, but uh, more so in the design of the levels. Like I would really like to see very large levels, the uh, the maps, the the areas that you you explore, not just in size, but more of kind of like a, a procedurally generated sort of thing. So basically, like each level would have sections, and they could, you know randomly switch up you know as you play each game so there's different paths and the challenging thing about this is i know there's a lot of development involved in something like that so if funds were unlimited if uh the creativity was unlimited then i really think that, that could make for the best left for dead experience uh for as far as the levels and the design goes because uh especially for Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, like, after you play through a map so many times, like, it's pretty much like there's one way to go about it, it's so one path to always take, um, and even though, you know, I put hundreds of hours into those games, um, you know, that, that, it takes away the excitement and the, you know, the kind of the new experience of playing a game like that where it's all about survival and traversing these crazy locations uh, through the zombie apocalypse with these like super zombies coming after you um, the special infected and whatnot but I think really that that would be what I would look for and Left 4 Dead 3 would also include Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 maps and characters um, not necessarily saying like Left 4 Dead 3 should be those characters in those new maps but at least include the original games uh, with so you you know when you play the 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 versus left 4 dead 3 you can play those old maps as well and maybe in the that sort of situation it'd be kind of cool to you know have all that experience tied together in one game so another thing that i, I think would really uh stand to benefit the left 4 dead series is uh something that the moba genre has done like with league of legends and dota uh, I, I don't exactly know how league of legend handles it because i haven't played the games but uh, i know they do have like some sort of kind of like ranking system for for players so uh basically uh like when they do the matchmaking like players who play through games you know they'll be ranked together or put together uh people who uh, quit games, you know, their, their, their stats get flagged, like, they quit this many games, or, 
uh, disconnects or whatever, or if if they're a, an asshole, like people can like thumbs down them and stuff, and it puts those players together. So it kind of gives this incentive to not be a jerk and to play the games and not quit and rage out and ruin the game for everybody else. And I think Left 4 Dead especially can can benefit from that because that was a big problem, especially later in the game's life when um, you know you had all these people who had all this experience just kind of you know punishing uh, newbies and multiplayer which you know it's an unfortunate side effect but if we had the the matching system where it puts people of equal or similar skill and rankings together I think that would really uh, kind of eliminate a lot of the issues that Left 4 Dead had uh, with the community because with no penalty, people can troll and quit and rage and just ruin the game for everybody else, which really they kind of did. I mean, I still love the game, but the community is just, it's the worst. Uh, and uh, I would love to see like a really widely adopted Left 4 Dead because there were great series. There was, I mean, there's tons and tons of people playing the games. Uh, but so with that said, then, uh, also, um, another game that I would dream to to see made would be uh, Diablo 4. Now, um, there's not a whole lot I could necessarily change or add to Diablo, but I think, again, like same with what I said for Left 4 Dead, that, you know, maybe bigger acts, because it's kind of, div Diablo is divided up in, like, acts. There's Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4. Um, Act 5 with the expansions, um, maybe more of those, you know, they're basically the, the, the regions for each chapter of the game. More chapters, maybe more uh, branching paths, more procedurally generation of areas. Like, as much as you can make an experience unique every time a person plays it, I think the more engaging and, and exciting it is. And I know it's really tough to do that on these, the scale with these games because uh, the the design is so meticulous and whatnot. But if this is my dream, I'm gonna dream of it. And you know, more classes, bringing back all the old classes. Uh, you know, Amazon and Assassin and Necromancer and uh, uh, Warrior and it, it just and uh, you know, make. I mean. Diablo 3 really has a, a dark cloud over it because a lot of people played Diablo 3 when it was first released or soon thereafter and the game was really screwed up like uh, the the decisions that some of the lead designers uh, made on the game were just not in the spirit of Diablo 3 and it, effectively it really destroyed the community um, but what they they did take notice uh, fortunately, like, I mean, Blizzard's typically, like, really great about the community, um, and with the expansion being released, like, as is now Diablo 3 is, like, exactly what Diablo 3 should have been. So, with Diablo 4, I would like to see none of those mistakes happen, you know, make it what it's supposed to be, um, you know, bigger areas, bigger bosses, uh, more classes, more things to do uh there, there's so much potential in the diablo series and each game is delivered on like such a high level um diablo 4 is is gonna be something else when it's released and i'm really excited for that day and i really hope it happens because just a, a great series and you know it's b beloved by many so um then with the the last dream game i guess is you know again related to my top five nostalgic video games uh, video is um, I would like to see like a true spiritual successor to a game like Neverwinter Nights. So uh, basically, what it is is it's a isometric RPG, kind of like Baldur's Gate or Icewind Dale, Dragon Age. Um, you know, uh, and Neverwinter Nights is based in the D and D universe, so there's tons of lore to draw from. Like there's rich history and characters. And, you know, besides just being a, a single player or maybe even a co-op experience for the, the main campaign of the game, I would love to see that, that really engaging, accessible tool set, the Aurora tool set that was released with the Neverwinter Nights that allows people to create their own custom worlds and 
uh, make really just amazing, unique, uh, enriching experiences. Um, I would love to see that happen again. Like, it, it's just so unlikely that it will, just because I, I can't imagine the, the amount of work that went into making those sorts of tools available to the player base. Um, mainly because I would love to see these persistent world servers come back, these living, breathing, custom-made uh, games, basically, um, where, where like, the imagination is the limit. Like, some of the things that I saw in some of these um, role-playing servers that I played on was just, I mean, I, I, like I said, it's, like, the best gaming experience I ever had in my life, and, um, you know, I know a lot of games do release kind of like modding tools and stuff like that, but that's completely different. Like the Aurora tool set basically was like, here's what we use to make the game. Here you go. Make You can make your own game if you want, which was freaking awesome. And I would love to see something like that again. So, uh, you know, kind of lame that I'm talking about, you know, basically franchises that exist, but... Uh, you know, those are three of my favorite game series, and their sequels are things that I dream for. Of course, there's tons of other games that I would love to see similar situations happen with. But as far as, like, a brand new, like, non-existent experience, like, nothing really comes to mind because, you know, it, it's, it's all kind of been done before in some way or another. Um, now I think it's just about getting the ability to open up the scope and scale of what these games are and, um... I really think uh, being able to have un more unique experiences playing the same game over and over um, just serves to add that much more to it. And uh, you know, here's hoping the these game developers, um, you know, are kind of looking forward to those things because there's only so many directions these game series can go, and I think that kind of you know, seems like the the obvious future in a lot of cases, but uh, yeah. So again, I want to thank uh, Ultra Extreme Bobastic Game Room for tagging me. Of course, I'm gonna put uh, his channel link in the description. So definitely check out his channel. And I know a lot of other people are doing some great uh, response videos to this. Um, a shout out to Black Metal Gamer for kind of starting this um, new topic. Um, and actually, this time, I'm not going to tag anybody in specific. Um, really, um, if you have any interest in talking about this topic, just go ahead and make a video. Uh, you know, uh, send me a link on Twitter or Facebook or, you know, mention it in the comments on this video. And, you know, I will definitely check it out and share it uh, with anybody I can. But, uh, yeah, so, so, um, so anyways, um, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching, and of course, check out uh, Ultra Extreme Bastic Game Room in the comments below, and I will talk to you next time on the Game Grinder.